Hi, I'm Dave Barnes. And I'm John McLaughlin. And welcome to Dadville. Dadville is a podcast where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of awesome dadding. It's funny thoughts and deep talks. So please, enjoy your time here in Dadville and enjoy this episode with... Jeff Morrow. Okay, folks, this, I want to I tell everybody a couple things before we start this one. We have Jeff Morrow with us today. And Jeff, you are a spam. You are like a conglomerate. Your greatest hits of food expertise and preparation, culinary invention and creativity, and musical mastermind comedy, s- comedy speed whiz, um, handsome, easy on the eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Soft skin, I assume. We've never met in person, but I assume you look... I mean, it's I all there. <laughs> <Sounds>. <laughs> I believe <laughs> Yes, lots of, <laughs> lots of uh, cocoa butter around the eyes, I can mm-hmm. see. Um, I am so happy. We, we, have, we have been excited about this for a long time. John and I did stretches before this. We did little wind sprints in the driveway just to get ready because we know we have signed up for a torrid a torrid affair i don't is that right i wanted to say that i don't even know what that means is that good or bad i don't know that i've ever used that term in a in a sentence okay that makes <laughs> whenever someone else does i just kind of nod and yeah you like okay let the moment okay. pass okay yeah. how All about right. yeah like no it's a torrid affair right it's 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 slightly naughty but it's very gratifying <laughs> and it will crush your family <laughs> If you no, get no. caught, <laughs> you leaned way too hard on the affair. I was going for, t- oh, I meant like in a moment. You're just yeah, going yeah, for yeah. torrid. <laughs> yeah. Like the definition of the word torrid. <laughs> oh, it's already begun. Kids will cry. Yes. Kids Daddy will, will cry. not be loved as much. Okay. So anymore. Uh, so, so uh, Jeff, what we do, I know you know this cause you listen to this every week between all the podcasts every, you do and the, every when, single when week. When it drops you, on Sunday, Thursdays, just, <laughs> Sunday, Thursdays. You're right, Catholic, right in the middle on Tuesday. That's a Catholic holiday. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 we start with a brag sheet, which means we just get to brag about you for a minute. Okay, so you just have to buckle up and listen to this part. Okay. Okay. So Jeff, Jeff Morrow, one man, two hands, uh, started his own catering company after college with his cousins, which is, I love this, primetime deli and catering, primetime. Y'all had cool shirts. I guarantee y'all had cool shirts. Graduated. Le Cordon Bleu culinary program as a valedictorian. Come on, mm. dude, flexing. One season mm. seven of Food Network star. In 2012, he was nominated for a daytime Emmy for his show Sandwich King, hosted $24 in 24, in which he would try to eat an entire day's worth of meals on $24. Opened a restaurant with one of the coolest names ever, Pork and Mindy's. Killing it. Pork and Mindy's. Are you kidding me? That's in 2014, he became a co host of The Kitchen which has been nominated for four Emmy Awards in its 30th season. Is that right? What? 31st now, I think. 30th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not four a year, yeah, four Not seasons. Yeah. He is the host of Come on, Come on Over, a Jeff Morrow podcast, which he hosts with his hilarious sister. In 2021, he dropped his first cookbook, Come On Over. He has been a guest co-host of the Today Show and featured on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, Steve Harvey, Good Morning America, CBS This Morning, Chopped, and Beat Bobby Flay, among many others. Hosts Kitchen Crash, which is so much fun, by the way. And if Mm -hmm. y'all don't know what this is, it is a genius idea for a show. You take three chefs to unsuspecting neighborhoods all over America and give them the ultimate challenge of ambushing people's houses. So they just walk up and basically one by one go to a house, say, hey, can we come in and use your fridge? Can we come in and use your fridge? And take everything they need for three intense cooking battles just from the food that they have from that one house's uh, uh, pantry and fridge. And while they rummage, Jeff casts hilarity upon the set and uh, sets up cooking stations in the middle of the street. It is such a fun show. That show is great. Great, 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 great. Also, and finally, he's used his brain and brawn and stomach to start a direct-to-consumer brand called Morrow Provisions, which he sells his own line of meats, spices, and giardinera. It says it right there. Come on. Giardinera. Giardinera. How you hey, doing there? That's, hey. How you guys doing? What is giardinera? Nice How's you? Oh my God! I'm, I'm going to blast you with it as soon as I get off this podcast. It's going to drop through your COVID-filled ceiling right into your torrid lap. No, it's a <laughs> willing and ready lap. I should mention. Thank you. Thank this, you. This we can get into, but it's like a it's 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 as ubiquitous as ketchup in the Chicagoland area. Oh wow! Midwest, some you dip it into Northwest Indiana, Michigan. You'll find it. Detroit, to kind of Wisconsin. You'll find a lot, but 
it's the epicenter is here in Chicago. It's it's pickled, it's fermented, it's a medley of a ton of peppers and vegetables, and then it's packed in in oil. So it's this beautiful kind of shiny, peppery, spicy. We have different. We have mild, medium, hot, and honey, but it's um. It's just a very, uh, it's it's good for you. It's crunchy. It's fermented, so it's funky. It's pickled, and it's super colorful, and we put it on everything, and I just happen to make the world's greatest version of it. <laughs> you it's just happen little, to be the, <laughs> the greatest purveyor of yeah. John Never. It's true, though, but I'm kind of, uh, I, it's mine. It's mine to bring to the masses, and that's been my goal since we started. So we're, we're oh, doing wow. it. I mean, we're in retail, ho- wholesale, we're in restaurants now. Like We have Come wholesale on. pay. Wow. Like, it's a business, and when I'm not okay. shooting... I'm there, man, like You're there. signing checks and stuff. It's, it's <laughs> exhausting. You. It's like, You're why am I it. doing this? <laughs> yeah. You, it. Oh, it does sound like from reading this, you're overcommitted. Tell me this. When I read this <laughs> to you, how do but like, I, you how, missed that I'm the I'm hosting Worst Cooks with Amber Burrell right now that's see, on look Sundays at this. At that's what I'm saying. It's the never the number one primetime uh <laughs> food network show rated. Not that not wow. that you know that. Not that you're keeping up with it. Who um uh, no, so thanks how, for like, getting a current bio on me, <laughs> Barnes. <laughs> What if the one I read was like up to like 2011? Open I mean, two th- 24 and shop. 24 has been canceled for, I don't know, oh, 10 years, not even, maybe 11. We only shot six episodes. People, I know what like what line they want in my Google search. Usually three or three down, I think, gives you that oh one where it's gosh. like yeah. the host of 24 yeah. and 24. I'm yeah. like, that show's been canceled. Plays since my son guitar. was literally on the teat. Yeah, that's right. Still, <laughs> still <laughs> camped out. So, so like, how do you... Well, th- let me ask it this way. What would, like, okay. a 14-year-old Jeff say if I read that to him? Like, this is where Dude. your life is going to be. Like, wh- what is he thinking when he hears that? That's a great question. I-, I think he's thinking, A, oh, my God, it's it, it happened. I knew it. Um, uh, what's the path to get there? Because this is very confusing. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, like, I... Like my first jobs were always in. I always knew I could do something with food to pay the bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at 14, I knew that because I'd work at these food festivals in the summer and make beefs, you know, like at a food stall at Taste of Chicago or Touch of Italy, these, these festivals. And I'd make Italian beef and we'd, I'd spend the whole weekend. I loved like being interacting with people while having food in, at, at the ready. Right, right. You know, mostly yeah. for right, my right, mouth. Right. So I wouldn't have been surprised, but I mean, it's a. I, it's a it's it's a big resume currently, and I'm not saying that in, in, in a braggadocious way. It's just I love everything I do, and and I've and if I was 14 and I read that, I would a b I would I would I wouldn't believe it at first, but yeah. after kind of looking at it almost like a puzzle, right? I'd be like, okay, I see how this fits into that. Let's yeah, let's stay on the righteous path and yeah. and, and yeah. work your butt off to get there. So, so even at that know. age, yeah, there was... fourteen, that was the goal. Hundred oh, percent. Oh wow! Dude, three third grade. I was like, first time I went on stage, I was in third grade, and it was for a school play called "Let George Do It." I'll never forget. And I played King George, whatever the eighth. I don't know which one was. Yeah, on. My yeah. history is not as good as my theater. I That's when I went on stage, and I was like, <laughs> I was like in third grade. And my you know dragged my parents from work to go watch this you know third grade play in the middle of the afternoon and from that moment on my my parents were like my dad who's like old school italian has hands like meat hooks and he's like this kid's you know theater every program every acting class every improv class whatever throw a minute like i never had to like run or touch a ball ever again if i stuck on this plane and i was chubby except so for I was like, lots of balls. So great. except for meatballs except for meatballs that's better yeah but so so i just knew it like at that age i was like i had to taste i was like i just want to do so i want to make people happy and laugh and entertain no matter what i'm doing whether it's cooking Working in a deli, which is like the stage of food, when you yeah, think about it, right. a deli case and that interaction with your guy uh-huh. and the meat, I love that. To, you know, music and obviously TV and stuff, you know. So I was, if I read that, I would not be surprised because the, 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 the goal started young. It's interesting okay. that there was like that relationship that early, though. Well, like when you were that young, third grade, you know you're interested in food and in my mind, I'm not, I don't immediately jump to like the performative aspect of that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when I'm, I think when people think like, oh, he's a chef, like that, they don't necessarily think 
Oh, that has an interactive uh, element to it, you know. With what I a mean? small no, asterisk we'll, for hibachi, but continue. That's true. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. Well, that's oh, call, call. Dude, we're gonna get some calls on that. I'm that's like, I might just, I'm gonna add that to the resume by next time I'm on this uh, on your podcast. It's gonna be like, and from 2022 to 2023, had hibachi chef at Marl's Hibachi Crazy House. You know? Oh my god! It's like where we hibachi everything. Just oh yeah, yeah. you know so. <laughs> No, but like when you think about chefs, right? They're living in the back of the house, as we say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweating, right, right. yelling, whatever. This, 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 you know, prototype of a chef, you, somewhat, you know, uh, surly and uh, interpersonal, right? It's like yeah. it's lacking those skills, you know, maybe a. <laughs> Too great. So, but man, that's why I loved, I've done, I've worked in kitchens before like that, but for brief periods of time. It, I just never dug it. That's why I was always. You know, like French trained, I know how to do all that stuff, but man, the the deli world, that interactive world was 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 perfect yeah. for me. Way more than I learned so much more up there than I did, you know, sauteing vegetables in the back of the house. But, you right. Know, did, did, not talking to the, the people. And even at that age, do you you know, did you see food be, would would that have surprised you reading it? Going, Okay, I get that I'm on all these shows, but food, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Or would have you been like, No, that's totally right. No, I, I, I would have, I would have been like, ah, that's how he does it. Like, that's <laughs> okay. the angle, you know? Like, honest to God, like, I'm yeah. not, like, you know, if I could, I would never give up food, you know? But, like, the performance to me is, like, the anchor of it all for me. That's, oh, gotcha, like, that's gotcha. the thing that really scr- scratches the itch in my soul is, like, just, you know, the laughs I get. Yeah. You know, but right. back then I always made my money in food. You know, my first job was for a butcher, you know, at a butcher shop down the street. And I, I realized the power of that interaction behind, you know, with the customer and the butcher. And it was a terrible job. I lasted three weeks. I was sweeping sawdust and blood oh. off the floor. Like, talk about old timey. Oh. You know what I mean? Sawdust. And, yeah. That's, you know, that's they, torrid, they, man. They, they would chain smoke while cutting meat. And it was, they had a stack <laughs> of Playboys in the back. And, like right, it's like, <laughs> why didn't I stay longer? I feel a, like B. I feel like every single poison record was written in that room. <laughs> like every rose has its thorn was written. Like they wrote that. Brett Michaels was in that room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. scrubbing fat off a cold milk pan, sawdust all up in my toes. So this you this know, may be a, a bandana. Uh, this may be a crazy, too open-ended uh, of a question, but how what, how would you describe your relationship with food? I thought I was, I thought you were going to drop a more serious <laughs> bomb on me. <laughs> thought instead of food, it was going to be like the Christ. I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> draw out the chain. Let me draw out the chain first, and then we'll talk about the Christ. No, I I have a very somewhat unhealthy relationship with food uh, overall. I come from a family with an unhealthy relationship with food. I have, you know, there's obesity, to mm. heart disease, to everything, and we are, you know, it's like everybody's every. My three siblings have an unhealthy relationship with food, you know. So uh-huh. now that you asked this, Doc, like <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, this was probably my way of wrangling that, you know, and and, and owning it uh, right. from a young age it. and controlling it, yeah. you know, and but also using the power for good, I guess, because it's so powerful that. Even now, like, I can't wait. You know, I'm a big intermittent faster, and we can get into that psychologically later. But, like, mm-hmm. I, I, I love that because it keeps me healthy. It keeps my weight down. It keeps my energy up throughout the day. And when I travel, which is pretty much every week, I'm not, like, eating on planes and eating at the airport. I'll work out in the morning. I'll drink coffee. I'll drink a ton of water. And when I get to my destination, I'll sit down and have dinner. And that, to me, is what I look forward to the most out of like anything in this career is like that, that moment I can have that first meal and like break my fast. But, yeah. but for me, like if, 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 if I'm cooking for, for, for a crowd, um, I'm so just as obsessed with, you know, uh, putting out a, a wonderful meal as I am like just eating it by myself from room service or something like that. So like the whole spectrum of food I obsess over, you That's know, amazing. to like, like this pot, I won't drink the rest of that because to me that's warm now and not fizzy mm-hmm. and I cracked it open 20 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. So you you're know, thinking about that. To, oh, and it's like I wish I had another one and I can't get another one because I have my beer fridge here which has like 
seltzers, you know, alcoholic seltzer, you know, I don't drink during the week, so I'm like not going to touch those. But now and then I'm smelling the urine in the air for my dog who pissed on my carpet square, <laughs> which I got to I got to fill you in later, John. Uh, so like there's this all this thing and it's like, you know, <laughs> I don't think I'm the the urine smells not making me hungry. I'm not saying that. Sure. But it's just all part of the smell right. to knowing that there's only that much left in it. And I smell my the dinner. My, my wife's making picadillo upstairs. Oh, uh-huh. that's all. so now I'm like, oh, my God, am I, am I going to be am I going to be wrapped in time to eat dinner? Is the dinner going to be hot? Does she know what she's doing? Oh, oh my gosh. Cook. It slowly just <laughs> de evolves. So- exactly. All while talking to you. Dave. John. Oh, man. We yeah. went two different directions. Yeah. That. yeah. Man, I've noticed that you've yeah. been walking with like the confidence of an eagle uh, and giggling in the face of danger <laughs> John, lately. John, to be a Barnes is to be that, but even more lately. <laughs> Do you know why? Why? Manscaped Platinum. Uh, I knew 4. it. 4.0. I knew it. That's yep. what I was going to guess. You know, yeah. Manscaped's brand new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle they've ever offered. It's crazy, giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped top products. Hey, listen, buckle up. Buckle okay. up. Okay. Because this info, <laughs> it's going to blow your hair back, okay? <laughs> Inside this Platinum Package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, nice. Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer. Listen, One of my favorites. John, listen. You hear how clear that is? Oh, that's that's clear as an eagle's <laughs> wing. It is. <laughs> Just one. Ultra premium body wash, mm-hmm. ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, John, mm-hmm. ultra premium deodorant, <sighs> crop preserver, anti-chafing deodorant, crop Whoa. reviver spray toner. Ooh. I've got more, John. Anti-chafing boxers. Yes. And the shed travel bag to hold your goods <sighs> while traveling. Man. In addition to shaving... Down. You can now completely upgrade your shower routine like I've done. I'm loving it with ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. I don't have time to do two different things. No, it takes up too much space in there. You'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Guess what else, John? Don't forget to apply their aluminum-free ultra premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go. Oh, I don't smelling forget. Good. Look, I, smelling good. I can smell you from over That's here. what I smell like. No, it's, I smell it's great. Yeah. If I can say that. Yeah. Now, you might be thinking, Manscaped has done enough. They don't need to do any more. They want to. But they want to do They're more. They're givers. They threw in two free gifts to their Platinum Package 4.0, the Manscaped boxers and the Shed travel bag. Yep. Bring your comfort and boxers to another level, David. The highest level. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all the basics from head to toe. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DADVILLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code DADVILLE. It's time you enjoyed the finer things in life, Mm -hmm. people. Get yourself a Platinum Package for your Platinum Package. For for (laughs) you to kind of want to control it like if you recognize that Mm -hmm. like okay you come from a family that has some you know some unhealthy eating relationships in their relationship to food to like it's not like you can't partake like we got to eat no you know what i mean we got it you have to and there's a healthy way of doing it and there's an unhealthy way uh and when you when you when you when you have the ability to cook it really puts so much more in control yeah, you know, in your yeah, control. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then even going out, knowing like what's good for you and what's bad when you're on the road or whatever, you know. And I splurge when I can. You know, yeah, pizza, man. You get me. Oh, bro. Did you want to see something gross? Oh, <laughs> you think my carpets, my piss stained <laughs> carpet squares behind me are gross? You should see me alone eating pizza. <laughs> I, I don't even that care. You're calling no, them carpet that. squares. Because you can remove them, they're they're stuck on there. It's my second round. I had wall to wall carpet, I see. big time. I see, that's pro. big time. That's a pro pet Huge. owner. Huge there. So when you got pets now, and my when I eat a lot of pizza, like there's no sh- there's I have no shut off valve sometimes. Yes, and that's, right. I want to strike my l- last statement. I could be around people, and I'll still eat the same way. I probably eat yeah. less alone with pizza just because. Yeah, know, the excitement. When the I'm thing- with other people, to you well, live in the worst place for the struggle. I mean, yeah, could you no live kidding. in a worse city to have the the pizza affinity you have? Yeah. No, because, and I realize that when I've spent the last two better parts of the last two and a half weeks on Long Island in New York shooting new season of Kitchen Crash coming out this July, actually. <laughs> and I, uh, I just, 
I, I, I tried pizza, you know, and, I, and I'm appreciative of New York style pizza. Mm-hmm. It does not scratch the itch, man. To no. the point where when I'm in New York, I'll look for like Detroit style pizza. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'll get into like a Yelp hole and then I'll start in the Yelp and then see what's the proximity <laughs> to my hotel room. Hole. Because sometimes you can get Yelp, you know, you can get burned on a aggregate app or whatever, DoorDash, because you're like, oh, my God, this place has got great reviews. It's going to be here in 47 minutes and I'm going to order you know, my face off because this has got, and then next thing you know, it's coming from eight, nine miles away. So then you have to like triangulate via Yelp and Google the pizza you want. And you got to make sure that your hotel room is the center. I get it. Center yeah, I get per this. relative to the star reviews on the pizza. Yeah. Because that eight miles is going to crush your yep. pizza. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not going to be the same. And then, throw them a couple bucks on the tip and then it's pro moves guys. And then in the notes, I say deliver to my hotel room for a little something extra. So I have to get my chubby ass out of the bed to go meet the guy downstairs awkwardly. And then like the hotel employees are like, well, this guy's got two pizza boxes. What's he up to tonight? I swear it happens all the time. And I'm like, that's, they put the slices in a normal pizza box. Oh my God. I have gotten like, you know what I mean? But sometimes there is, one pizza plus a slice of like grandma style or something. Oh. I love pizza. Dude, <laughs> I, I, I feel so you just said that so you said you said pro tips. And here's here's what I want to sort of intermittently throughout you said fast to me a different way, but intermittently throughout this interview, I wanna ask because you know, we have we have dads and moms that listen and we just need, you know, when you were on Dave's Dave's Five Hot Takes, uh the other pod, you you killed this by the way. This was like you crushed this. So what I'm gonna do intermittently through this interview okay. is ask you some pro tip questions for like the listeners out there okay so the first one in this is the first one just drop in in the middle of these of it for all the dads out there that are overwhelmed or don't think they're good at cooking like cooking overwhelms them or they don't think they're good at any like pro tips or pieces of advice you would give those dads who are like no, jeff you don't understand i'm bad at this or i just i can't do it well, I mean, that is that's assuming that they consistently try yeah. and the yeah. what they're putting out is probably not great. Right. I, I, I think listen, man, whatever, YouTube video, start there. You know, like really make something w- watch an instructional video just so you know, okay, maybe it's how when I'm putting the onions in the oil or my oil's too high and it's smoking. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fundamentals yeah, yeah. where you don't really have to take a master class. And then make that recipe three times. Oh, okay. It doesn't have to be three days in a row. Make it once every two weeks, but like get it. And then by, I can guarantee you by that third time. And if this, you know, make sure it's a family favorite, Taco Tuesday, whatever, and learn how to like, right? It could be certain tips. Like, let's say you're a Taco Tuesday. You know, we'll do it all the time. Ground beef, gringo tacos. I love them. We'll do it out of turkey. We'll do chicken, whatever. But let's say you're doing a baseline gringo taco. A tip, a pro tip, within the creamy filling of the the umbrella pro tip I just gave you <laughs> is when you're dealing with ground beef, like a quarter teaspoon of baking soda in the ground beef before you saute it. Let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. Wait, what is it's, that? The, P, the pH level changes, right? <gasps> See, this is what meat, we're looking will, for. This is what we're looking for. This is great. So it's nothing. Everybody has it. You don't have to, like, search for a... A, a, an odd ingredient right. you have ever everybody's got baking soda you put it you just move it around the meat kind of make sure it's like evenly dispersed without overworking 10 15 minutes it what it does is it create uh the ability for the meat to hold on to all its fat and juices so what you'll be left with is a beautiful juicy ground beef product chili <laughs> bolognese gringo tacos whatever it is without a puddle of fat under it or so, juice. so you're putting all this that in, in there before you cook it any seasoning before anything on top, just before you cook it, before you add anything else to that, yeah. a quarter teaspoon of baking soda per pound of ground beef. Gosh, this and is. And when you saute about. it with whatever paprika, uh, I don't care. We'll use. We got a. We love a brand called Siete. Oh yeah, um, we love. I don't yeah. know if you've heard it. Great mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. We love their seasoning packets for tacos. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. literally the five things I'm going to use anyway in a pretty well defined ratio, and I'm just going to you know. But when you do this little trick, what you're left with is a super juicy meat without a discernible puddle of fat that you often get in a ground beef 
saute. You know what yeah. I mean? The baking soda keeps all the juice in. Hold on, okay. I just want to repeat that for everybody that just heard that. Quote, unquote, a discernible puddle of fat. I that's that. the that's the title yeah. of this episode, hands down. For sure. Discernible bundle. That was that's how I viewed uh, myself when I was 13, 14, when I was wow. looking at my resume. It's like, how's this discernible <laughs> bundle of fat gonna make it, Ma? I don't know. <laughs> what do I do first? Do I make sandwiches or do I go for the TV's careers? I don't know what's gonna do, Ma. I'm a discernible bundle of fat. <laughs> I kind of just want you to do the rest of the interview with that voice. If the you can. plural. It's, up to you it's not even how I sounded. It's like that. It's like a New York guy. You were like a forty-five-year-old New Yorker when you were thirteen. <laughs> I know. So, what? Speaking of when you were thirteen Jeez, or a kid, what was it? What's the? What's like the food origin story for you? Like, what? What are your oh, memories man. of like who got you into cooking? Oh, it's like you know, it's so cliche. Just hey, hey, bud. I'm on a hey. podcast right now. Hey. Say hi to David. Is that Lorenzo? John. This is Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Hello, That's Lorenzo. everybody. What's up, Scott Lorenzo? Back from school. You two look like twins or clones. Yes. Or, what do you or smell clones. in this room? <laughs> Aren't they both handsome men? There's only handsome men right now. Even even when you got in the quadrant, right. you're still. Oh. Ew. Um. Uh. You could stay here. Just yeah, I'm gonna. No. You Sorry, don't. Well, we're fine. He's only <laughs> let's see. He plays Kerbal Space Program. Have you heard of it? No, no. It's a rocketry uh, program game kind of thing. For what? What is it? Rocketry. Well, how would kids. I? How would you describe it? Exactly how you describe it. You get to build your own rockets, planes, yada yada, and fly them around. It's oh, that's fun. cool. Jeez, how Beat is he creep. already smarter than me? Creeping me out. I don't that's, know. No, Tell me about not it. Talk, talk about games. me. Well, my son's 13, so it's ironically you brought you, ironic that yeah. you brought up, you know, me when I was a little puddle of fat. But <laughs> uh, for, so it is cliche. Like we, I grew up in this big Italian American family, so uh-huh. I mean, very uh, you know uh, matriarchal food based yeah. existence from a young age. You know, from my grandma making this pizza at this little stove in the tiniest little house in the northwest side of Chicago and barely cooked, right? Homemade dough. And I mean, one of the earliest memories is because the smell is unbelievable. And it wasn't cheese, little crushed tomatoes on it in this dough. But I remember sitting there waiting for, because it was like, again, the pizza thing, right? But she'd only cut it with these old steel kitchen, not even kitchen scissors, the same scissors she used for the yarn, you know? (laughs) She'd go right to the pizza. And I just remember this like snip. Of just the the just the scissors right through that soft bear you know undercooked uh-huh. dough and I'd be like, mm, <laughs> um. and from there it'd be like then would be dinner and then everybody would come over to and squeeze into this house. I have fifteen first cousins. We'd Jeez. all get together. And just the smell of red sauce and meatballs and you know mastacholi. You know just the smell of like cooked pasta. Uh-huh. You know steaming up the salt, yeah. the, the the starch in there. I don't know, man. All these things and then. You realize every celebration is surrounded by just an overabundance of food. Hmm. So you 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 start to relate, you know, a, a food with, with with any celebration, whether it's good or you know, a graduation party or a wake. You know, there's trays and right. things, eggplant, right. sausage. So I was just like, from an early age, I just couldn't wait to have a family party. Wow. We see my cousins, right? Have fun. We do all that stuff, but man, we be eating. Isn't and was that like was that unique to you, or were you like, now this is how all all kids are like, the great food? I, you know, at funny the family like gatherings. growing up, growing up, you know, my whole family. It's funny, like all my mom's one of f- four children as well. I'm one of four. <clears throat> all my aunts and my uncle, they all married full blooded Italians too. So like all my cousins are all first. <clears throat> well, maybe there's a couple, you know, there's a couple odd ones out there from a second marriage, whatever, that I love to death, but. <laughs> Like, legitimately, I would say 80% of us are all yeah. full-blooded Italian. So, to me, we all did it. Whether you go to Aunt Jay's, Aunt Phil's, Uncle Neil's, Grandma's, anybody, it was all food. But my crew in, like, junior high and high school and all that, none of them were Italian. They were mostly Irish. And they had, like, the opposite, where I had to be home at 5 o'clock, and I couldn't wait to be home at five o'clock to eat. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, well, I gotta go eat. Where these kids would be like the third night of whatever, the local Euro's place, or eating uh-huh. the leftovers from the Euro, you know, the pizza 
the night before, and they didn't have to go home for dinner. So I felt you know, like an anomaly among them. Hey, Dave. Yeah, John. You know, starting the summer off on the right nutritious foot. Oh, listen. It's not always easy, you know? Yeah, it's nearly August, John. A little. <sighs> That's crazy. No, it's okay. It's a little late. You're a little late on that one. But, yeah. you know. It's, well, it's never too late to start thinking healthy. Oh, I see and Athletic Greens AG1 formula is the easiest way to get your daily vitamins and minerals. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens, the health and wellness company that makes comprehensive daily nutrition really, really, really ridiculous. Really. Oh, I thought simple. you were going to say really no, again. There's only yeah. two. Ridiculously okay. simple. Yeah. yeah. Especially when on tour. Yep. Dates available at johnmcl.com. <laughs> and away from home, we also have VIP packages. <laughs> Getting good sleep and healthy meals can be harder and harder and harder to come by, Dave. Uh, I just wish you were going on tour soon. That's why we <laughs> turned to AG1 by Athletic Greens, the category-leading superfood product that brings comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everybody. Now, to help each of us be at our best, they simplify the path to better nutrition by giving you one solution that includes all the best things for you. Whether you're on the road, John's touring this fall, That's or right. in the studio, I'm making the music, or sitting in the pickup line at school, Athletic Greens will help you stay healthy while on the go. Just one tasty scoop of AG1 contains, let me tell you, Dave, okay, 75 okay. vitamins, minerals, okay. and whole food sourced ingredients, okay. including okay. a multivitamin, a multimineral, okay. a probiotic, green superfood blend and more in one convenient daily service. Jeez. The special blend of high quality bioavailable, coolest word ever maybe, mm -hmm. ingredients in a scoop of AG1 work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, support energy and focus, aid with gut health and digestion, and support a healthy immune system, effectively replacing multiple products or pills with one healthy, delicious drink. Just so one. join the movement of musicians who are on tour and yep. making their music. <laughs> Athletes, dads, soccer moms, rookies, you name it, that are taking ownership of their daily health and nutrition. To make it even easier, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash dadville today. That's athleticgreens.com slash dadville to give AG1 a try and take control of your health. Isn't that interesting too that as you say that I, I I wonder how much of our affinity for food is tied to some sort of nostalgia. I mean, obviously we just love the way it tastes. I mean, I could eat. I have yeah. no ties to, you know, um, any deep dish pizza from growing up, and I love it dearly. But it is it is cool. I love to hear you say that. Like how much of it was knowing that eating is going to be gathering, and you loved both of those things. You know. Yeah. It, they sort of tie mm -hmm. together as you think about that, which is really fascinating. Oh, like family parties, as we call them, right? Oh, man. First of all, if it was your birthday, you're getting envelopes. No gifts, right? It's just envelopes. And then at the end of the night, you open up, there's got a $20 bill, you got a $10 bond. You know a what bond. I mean? Whatever. <laughs> Remember the bond? And I asked my mom the other I was like, Mom, what happened? All, like, I swear to God, I got at oh, least you have 720 so much bonds. Money. You got like, so much are... money sitting like, somewhere. I don't know. I literally, like, right yeah. behind me, in my little file cabinet, I have an envelope full of all the bonds that I got as a kid. Stop it. I don't know what to do with them. I don't, you got to Google what they're worth. I know. Do you? Do I take them to the bank? Do I, do I'm going to mail laugh them so somewhere? hard when you try are to a Go to Subway with them or something and try to pay for something with them. <laughs> go to Blockbuster right? Video and just see if go you to, can cash in those bonds. <laughs> see if the you laminated card. Oh, my you God. You know, when I, when I was prepping for this for the, the past couple months, I was, uh, I, I kept coming through all these parallels, right, to, to, from music to cooking, right? Mm -hmm. And so forgive me if this becomes a little annoying, like I'm going to beat this horse throughout this whole thing. But, Ooh, but like when, when I, uh, you know, I mean, music is always nostalgic. Music's nostalgic for everybody, right? Any, some song comes on and it reminds you of your whatever, junior high. Mm -hmm. But when I, you know, I grew up studying cool. classical music and I still play classical music now. So like I'll, I'll learn these pieces that might take me like a month. Right. And it may take me like a whole week to learn like, like a couple bars of this piece. And forever, when, once I learn that piece forever, like it could be 10 years later when I'm playing that piece, when I get to that section, I will remember what was going on in my life that week 
that I was playing that wow. bar. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, that's cool. Every yeah. time. It's, it's crazy. It's like it's all stored up there. And I'm wondering if there's any parallel there with like old recipes that you either like you put together yourself or something like that, that like whenever you make that dish 20 years later, it reminds you of something every time. You know what I mean? For sure, man. Um, well, first of all, when I when I ripped through the uh, Sultans of Swing solo, both of them. Come on. It, it, Come on. Um, it automatically reminds me of the two weeks I was shooting the kitchen and going like every day trying to learn those licks. Right. You know, through tab and YouTube videos. But like, yeah, that was I like remember this because it was like, you know, the smell. Right. And what I was drinking, like, it's unbelievable. It's crazy how much of, of it, it comes way. back. Yeah. Um, but the food, I mean, food, forget, like, it is like, so it's the same exact reaction, you know, like I, I was, I was flying home last night and I wasn't supposed to be home. I actually surprised my wife. It was mother's day and I was supposed to, because the COVID thing, the production shut down today. So not, not on set Just some of the families we were sh supposed to shoot with today. Couldn't do it. So I flew home early and I went to the, uh, like the United club at LaGuardia, right? Which I'm in all the time. Mm -hmm. And I walk in through the doors. Uh oh, are you throwing up? <laughs> no, it's like, oh, oh, admirals. <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm an American guy. I don't fly United. <laughs> uh, uh, United? <laughs> JetBlue, bro, buddy. Try it out. So Jet I walk into in the uh, United Club, and it is. Um, it was like. A Sunday, right? Yesterday was Sunday. And I just told you that story about my cousins, right? In my grandma's house on Sunday in the red sauce. They had, I didn't eat it, but on like the steam, on the hot line of the, the food you get to eat there in the club, there was meatballs, like with the red sauce. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, I walked in there. I was like, whoa. I go, it's, it's sun, like, it was like, whoom. And it's a, it's a smell that, Makes me happy, makes me hungry, makes me nostalgic. All mm. these emotions at once, and no, like I had to sit down. Of course, like, like, so what do I do to like calm my nerves? I I brew a double espresso, right? Like that's gonna help. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna save my, I'm gonna surprise trick. my wife. She's making dinner with my in laws. We got meatloaf, the United States of meatloaf. Great Jeff Morrow recipe, the United States of meatloaf, oh, best look meatloaf you ever make. Mm. Looked it up on lifeflow.com slash kitchen. So we, so I walked in. I smell this red sauce and it's not it's not like there's a nona behind the thing you know stirring a big pot of gravy right, <laughs> it's right. like frozen commodity meatballs in a you you know in a club all you can eat meatballs you know are never that delicious but man it like made me so much more excited wow and anxious to get home and like get to that meal and surprise my wife and be gathered it's a cool moment that, that yeah. i love that um okay here's our second um do -do 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 <sighs> second pro tip question Oh yeah, you just did the like you did the the. the I know, warm, I did it. It was automatic. You were, you, you regretted it. My son, give what, me another one. What <laughs> what meals do you think dads can learn that are easy to cook and nice to have in the back pocket? Like, what's it, you got some dads that are listening? They're going, listen, I just need like I need a couple that I can just get to quick that I know I can knock out. What are the meals you think you'd be like? Learn how to cook these three things. They're quick. They're easy. They always win. All right. All right. Let's start with something like let's go you know, high, high level indulgent. Uh, like if, 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 if you like to cook for people, you can't beat like a steak, like a ribeye, um, a strips, the New York strip for a crowd, for a family of four, you, you only need to make, you know, a couple steaks and you could slice them up. But the fundamentals of cooking a proper steak sets you up for success with other Right, it's a great Ooh. launching pad Ooh. for successful searing, temperature control, and fabrication or slicing. You know what I mean? Ooh. So like, ah! so if you want to, like you should know, and I'm not saying like desecrate it on a grill outside with your buddies with a cold one in your hand. I mean, like there's a certain like art form to doing that alone, but just like I'm saying like in your kitchen, maybe even on the grill, and that would be to reverse sear a big cut of meat. Let's say it's a, inch and a half bone in or boneless ribeye doesn't matter a new york strip you cover it in salt and pepper you put it on a wire rack sheet tray put it in the oven at like 200 degrees for an hour it'll hit 110 115 and then you sear it in a pan with a little oil or some butter 
two sides, and it's going to be perfect medium rare or medium to whatever. So I would say in order to do that correctly, you need an instant read thermometer, and that's where I would start. Love that. If you really want to like put out good, well-cooked chicken, pork, beef, you got to temp your stuff for many years (laughs) before you even realize. Like, you got to temp your stuff. You got to temp. You got to temp that. Temp that protein right in the middle, thickest part, and learn what the temperature should read. Uh, You'll over time you'll get you know a familiarity with touching it or you know like seeing how spongy or resistant the meat is to know what the correct temperature is without using a thermometer. But that's like just start with a thermometer, make a great steak. Second, you need a good side for that. Um, You know what I think cooking, making a vinaigrette in a salad is very underrated. People reach for bottle dressings all too much. And if you look at the ingredients, it's a lot of stabilizers and xanthan gums. And Mm -hmm. I don't know, just nothing's like a homemade vinaigrette. You need red wine vinegar, champagne, apple cider, mustard, right? Some seasoning, maybe some fresh herbs if you had it, or some dry herbs, a little bit of honey to round off the, the acidic edge and stream in oil and you got boom. And then you make your... You know, then I make a salad with three colors in it. Could be green romaine, some chopped or shaved carrots, right? Uh, red bell peppers, diced up, something, right? Cook with color too then. That'd be like my third thing, right? Don't make just white food or just green food, right? It's not appealing. And the more you kind of explore the color palette, you know, it's better for your tasting palette, but the more you're likely to kind of I don't know, to fine tune some of those skills and try new things. But start with the steak, get to a good vinaigrette, make a nice salad, then you then you get on to, to potatoes <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> salad. 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 Oh <laughs> salad. So if you had to oh. make a steak, you and you had a you had a grill and you and then you had a kitchen with a stove, you would go stove. Yeah. Yeah, I would, man. I, I this is something my, that's happened in our house. I yeah. used to you know, like if we were going to have steaks, my wife would like, you know, marinate them or whatever. And then she'd mm-hmm. hand them to me to take outside to the grill. But now I, I hand them right back. I'm like, when you <laughs> when you put them on the, the little a risk taker, uh, what do you call it? The iron skillet? It's yeah. just better. Yeah. It's, and a part of me died, well, but it's more just surface better. area. Right. Yeah. You got more contact with the surface area. You got more of that me. My reaction, which is the that's exactly what of, I tell her. <laughs> Baby, my baby loves my yard. My what yard do you want for me. <laughs> I'll be out in my yard. You cook them. Hey, baby, can you take these outside and grill them? No, baby, I'm gonna hand them right back to you. We're gonna fool my yard tonight. <laughs> Buckle up. Torrid my yard all over in it. Surface area complete. Not a. Not no gray in sight. Oh my Golden brown my yard. So when you hit it in the pan, you're reserving that fat, which is whatever you can do without me. You know, it's not like you're gonna drink the fat, but if you cook it at a right temp. Right, you get that kind of just edge to edge crust that is you see in steakhouses, right? That yeah. just deep crunch, crunch that is f- flavor and texture, which you know go very well together. Yeah. And then if you want to get in, you know, throw a tab of butter after you flip it, you can kind of baste it in the butter and then reserve all that kind of rendered fat from the steak with the butter. And when you cut your steak or when you plate your steak, you pour that warm kind of elixir all over it. So <laughs> otherwise, you're, it's dripping into the grill. Right, John. Exactly. It's, it's going right. to no one. Flaring up and yeah, yeah. You may have just nope. converted me. Well done. Yeah, but then you got to clean the pan, which can be a, a pain in the butt. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, here's another parallel for music and and cooking. Uh, Finger tap. Wait, f- first off, or before I say that, what do you prefer? Do you prefer Jeff Morrow the cook, Jeff Morrow the chef? What do you say that you are? Well, I, and what's your I, relationship I, I to the Playboy. Christ? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say to answer both questions at the same time, <laughs> I prefer syrup. No, I I would say chef over cook because I earned it through the years, you know, uh-huh. and uh, I got the paper, and I went to school, and I even though I'm not a restaurant chef you know winning james beard awards i know a tremendous amount about food and have practiced it for many decades you know two yeah. decades yeah, so yeah. i like it i think it's respectful i think i deserve it flat out for sure um 
cook is like general, you know, that could be, you could be a home cook. You can, I'm not disparaging it. You could be a line cook, but you're not a chef yet, you know, until you lead a kitchen okay. in some. some I assume that those terms kind of fell the way you're describing, but I was like, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe I've got that wrong. But I was thinking how, you know, like with music, one thing that is fascinating about music is you can, you can be, you know, you could be like at the top of the industry. Like Paul McCartney is a great example of this. I was listening to an interview with him the other day and he's, I mean, who has been more successful than Paul McCartney in the history of, of music? But cool, he doesn't yeah. know, he, he doesn't know what key he's in. He doesn't know the, like the changes that he's Stop. making. He's like, I don't know what that is. My, my the guys in my band sound. knows, but I, I don't know. So you could be like Juilliard trained or you could know nothing and you can be crazy successful. And I would imagine there's got to be some overlap with that in the culinary world. Am I right on that? For sure. I mean, that just perplexes me that Paul McCartney, you know, sir, Paul McCartney next time. That's right. Thank you. John. Yeah. Thank um, you. Sorry, Dave. And I'm so embarrassed. He's going to be pissed. <laughs> just we'll to fix answer, that. Answer, answer this question. We'll fix me. that in post. Yeah, yeah. Just don't worry about him for the rest <laughs> yeah. of the interview. <laughs> but... <laughs> I think there is, right? I mean, I think I lie somewhere in between that, right? I have the training, but I'm not. I didn't go to CIA, which is the Juilliard of culinary oh, wow. schools, right? I uh -huh. went to like, you know, maybe the DeVry. I don't know. Not, But that's not bad. I, I got all the skills I need while working a full-time job in a year. You know what I mean? That was, that's, that, that, that was, that's what I was able to afford time-wise and, and monetary-wise. But there's people that I think build flavors – from a very, um, right, classically trained music style, you know, background mm -hmm. that they're like, I know that this goes here and this flavor goes like this. And then you have like soul food, which is, right, the blues, right? Does, yeah, did, yeah, You know, yeah, did yeah. Muddy Waters know every key he, yeah, I'm sure he knows we're going to do this, you know, B minor 12 bar blues or whatever. But did he know the theory of the circle yeah, of fifths yeah, or yeah, something? Yeah, like right, that's yeah. what I always think about when I'm trying to, learn this stuff and I'm terrible at music theory and I'm terrible at math and I'm terrible at that technical uber French style of tweezer cooking right tweezer Micro, you cooking. know uh, that's so you know good. what I mean or um molecular uh, gastronomy yeah which mm -hmm. I appreciate I love jazz music I love classical I love seeing people at their top form play music as well as chefs at the top form I don't pretend to know how to emulate it, but I can, but I could pretend to emulate it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like I could, I could rip a solo through most major or minor keys on my guitar, but I'm relying on instinct less, you know, in feeling and gut. Yeah. But I'm like, Oh my God, I just, you know, do I go, do I, do, you know, do I play the, the dominant seventh now? Do I go back? Do I play the, 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 the chord melody? The triad, I don't know. I'm just, I try to learn all that stuff and then play with feeling and I cook exactly the same wow. way. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's well said. What, what, you know, with someone who's done this as long as you have, what is something about being a professional chef that people would be surprised to know about it? That's like either insider trading or like just something mm -hmm. you're like, isn't it interesting that, that this is something in our world that people would just never know? Um, well, first of all, picture a career where you're really not making much money and whatever money you make, you have zero time to spend it because you're working nights and weekends, wow. prepping most of the day. And if you're an executive chef, you're there all day. Most like you see menus, right? And sometimes you see them at the at the pass, right? Expediting like the head chef in charge. It, that's usually not even the executive chef, right? That's the chef de cuisine or something. The head chef's in the back doing paperwork. Wow. Hmm. You know? crunching numbers and trying to you know save money because it's a miserable business to try to make money and mm -hmm. but to me that's like why i never wanted to be that because it's like there's math there's paperwork there's right nights and week i love nights and i love party i love yeah. family parties i don't want to miss a family party yeah you know yeah and then you and i wanted a family and i wanted to raise a family and i wanted mm -hmm. i loved my wife and like i didn't want to be away from everything i've yeah. done enough of that in my career with when I was in shows or when I was in restaurants and stuff, I was like, I promised myself that, you know what, I would, because a lot of the guys I knew 
coming up, things don't end well a yeah. lot of the time. Right. So what yeah. is portrayed as this glamorous job is very difficult, bad for, you know, there's a lot of substance abuse with it because you're getting off late and you're drinking with the crew and then, you know, you do that six times in a row. I mean, you got to stay up and you got to keep the train rolling and, and rinse and repeat, you know? And so I'm not saying they're all, there's some amazing ones now and I think the industry now more than ever is supporting a healthier lifestyle with huh. with tradi you know with restaurant chefs yeah isn't it funny how much when you said that i literally just thought oh he's talking about music you know what i mean like yeah. that that right. literally sounds like, a lot I mean, to john's overlap. point about the yeah. uh, overlap it is insane how and much I just, that sounds like music i don't i like i i, I like hypocritical too because tv's the same way right i'm you know i'm i'm gone three nights a week maybe yeah. on average yeah. maybe one maybe two maybe 22 you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's like it's basically this the same thing and here i am but it's still like w way more manageable you know yeah, yeah. people bring me a lot of things and now a word from our sponsor better help john question yes do you ever feel burnt out or just kind of fried oh yeah mean? yeah yeah i mean i find that when life is overwhelming which it can often be overwhelming yep. I just need to refocus, kind of focus on myself, and today's sponsor, BetterHelp, can help you do just that. Yeah, I can't speak to the amount of help, and we talk about this in the pod a lot, that yeah. therapy has given me. Oh, it yeah. is so helpful. So helpful. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing the stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. No camera time? I'm in. Yeah. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash DadVille. That's BetterHelp.com slash DadVille. Rounding out the questions before we get, because we want to talk about your shows for a second too. What are the, what, all right, so last, last question that's like uh, the pro tip questions. Um, I, I, let's say a dad comes to you and he says, listen, I just need three meals that I can knock out of the park. That, that, like, they're always going to land, but they're kind of easy mm -hmm. to make, but I can, but, but I can make these three meals. What are the three meals you're going to say? Okay. Bro, I got you. I got you, bro. Listen, hear me out. My Italian beef pot roast style. Ooh. It is my like I think my it is up there top three number one rated recipes on FoodNetwork.com. You can get it. It's in my cookbook, but there's an updated version in my cookbook. Uh, come on over, but it, you could get it online. Whatever. I'm not trying to chill for my book. It's That's like, great. It's, 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 ship has sailed. I'm never gonna make money. Off of that. <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> that is it's good to do. It's a crowd pleaser. You can serve it as a pot roast with potatoes, or you can make sandwiches out of it. Okay. For the kids, a little goes a long way, and it teaches you about braising techniques. So Ooh, again, it's all okay. about kind of okay. learning okay. the Feeling fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, number two, I would say learn like a quick pasta sauce, like a quick bolognese sauce. Uh, I have one on, on, on line tune you could look up, but that's just like a good way to, um, again, the ground beef cookery methods are, can be implemented in Ooh, that. Ooh, a little um, baking soda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then my third, I'm trying to keep it easy here too. I would do, uh, dude, how about like just a good, good old American cheeseburger? And I'll tell go. you why, right? Because then you can, I would even look at, I'm trying to think of what burger recipe. If there, there's a couple burger recipes in common. I just, I've got a million out there. But for me, it's all about that. It's easy. It's great. Everybody loves a cheeseburger. It really teaches you how to handle, you know, cooking something to a certain temperature, whether you want it well done or medium rare. But also it's about the bread too. Right, you go to the your buddy, right, John. You go to Dave's for the barbecue, the annual barbecue, and invites you over mm -hmm. after he's, yep. mm -hmm. you know, done doing his thing, you know, mm -hmm. John tour, mm -hmm. and he's gonna he's flame the grills flaming. Mm -hmm. It's really all those flames are lapping at that mm -hmm. beautiful. He sprung for the good grass fed fed prime That's beef. What I do. Mm -hmm. It's who I am, and he does perfect char on the outside. Oh look at this! I he even got the thermometer, yep. John, and he yep. tempted. He's got the app. It's yep. a buck thirty-five. It's at right where he needs to medium. <laughs> he gets the grilled onions perfectly caramelized. He got the good white American cheese. It's draped over two slices, and then he takes the buns that he got from the bakery, Enzo the baker, and he puts it dry 
mm, on the grill no. and toast it like he's making a bagel. And you take a bite of this burger, and the bread is just brittle yeah. mm. and dry and over-toasted in the life that Enzo spent four generations yep. putting into this bread. <laughs> so disrespectful. Is, is, is Gone. You don't put demolished. it right on the grill, Dave. I tell you a yeah, million times. <laughs> I've been making a hamburger buns for four <laughs> generations. <laughs> and this is a motherfucker. He goes and makes him and puts him on the grill. I don't do it anymore. I <laughs> don't do it. We close tonight. Close. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just canceled your pictures up. In yeah, the, I'm done. And so the bakery. The <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's the, like... That's why it's important to know how to make a great burger and, and going to one of these recipes. Because, again, people expect them at a barbecue. But it's those small things where you're going to take that bun and you're going to spread it with butter that's beautiful, that you left out all day. Room temperature. Mm. Smear it. Mm. Crust to crust. And you're going to put it on a pan in the house while those burgers are resting. And you're going to get them golden brown. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do that four times over. Yeah. Right? Yep. Get Fit four buns on there, two buns as big as a pan you got, and you're gonna. It's gonna. Be, you're gonna. Someone's gonna be like, "Why is this burger so good? How much did you spend on the meat? Why are your onions so beautifully caramelized?" Mm. It's not a, what the secret is. It's in that bun and the treatment of the bun. That's what's gonna make you the star of your block, Dave and John. <laughs> People have always said out there. the secret of my life is my buns. That is something is. that have that's. It, no yeah. one has said it out loud, but I can tell when I'm. You can tell it. they're thinking it. Yeah, yeah, they're thinking yeah. that a thousand percent. Golden yeah. brown, crust to crust buttered buns. C to C, man. Come on, let's stop. That's the that. secret. Yeah, yeah. C to C, crust to crust is a must. You know that's my saying. Did you? <laughs> did no, I say that on my bio from 2014. <laughs> crust to crust is a must. <laughs> oh my god! I've been saying it for many years. Many years. It is. So, it is my. Yeah, I got So how many? How many shows are you? Are you hosting right now? Uh, too many. Uh, no, it's 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 good mm -hmm. to be uh, employed in this, right? Yeah. It's a scary thing to have like one show on because you know you're, there's two types of shows. This is with television's Mark Summers, host of Double Dare, uh, <laughs> oh, Unwrapped, yeah. and oh, one yeah. of the producers of Twenty Four and Twenty Four. Come on, six no episodes. way! Yeah, he produced it, so we're, we're we're actually really good friends. And he's like, you know, he always brings up oh, Milton Berle and I were in a you know, sauna and maybe, you know, whatever. You're like, Jesus, <laughs> this guy's really been in TV for. Right. I don't know if, he, you know, Milton, he was ever in a sauna with Milton Burrow, but, that's you know, a, it's always like some guy that I should know who it is. You right. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackie Green. I'm like, who? So, but he told me, you know, there's, you know, Jeff, there's two types of television shows. And I want to have him talk like, you know, Jeff, there's two types yeah, of yeah, television yeah. shows. Lean in. You know, but he's like, he's got, you know, very friendly voice. There's two types of television shows. Those that are on the air and those that are about to, no, there's two types of television shows. Those that are canceled and those that are about to be canceled. Oh, my God. So he told me this, like, little, you know, seven episodes later, the show he produced. He should have kept his mouth shut, but it was canceled. But um, so it's scary to have only one show on. So luckily, they've been using me frequently. So I have Worst Cooks in America, Celebrity 90s Edition, uh, which is all 90s celebrities. That's on Sundays at 8 p.m. Oh, is so, It is the funniest. Lorenzo, isn't the funniest show I've done? Worst Cooks? It's very funny. Is he it like a uh, like a nailed it kind of thing where they're just no, the, the, the gig is they're bad. Their gig is they come in bad and we every week we teach them and there's two teams. It's Amber and Burrell and myself uh, representing a team of, in this case, 90 celebrities. I have Jody Sweeten, um, Matthew Lawrence, the Lawrence Brothers mm -hmm. fame, wow. uh, the Lori Beth Dernberg from all that. Uh, Jenny Kwan from California Dreamers on her Jeez. team is um, uh -huh. Tracy Gold from Going Pains, Mark oh, Long yeah. from the OG. You know, he's like the godfather of all reality. And right. he is getting whooped. Like, you know, this is a guy who's, you know who Mark Long is, right? He's like, he wrestles, he does road rules, real world challenges, all this stuff. And he's like, he's a no match for cooking. It's so funny. They are genuinely bad cooks. So <laughs> I'm doing that. It's a blast. Uh, the kitchen, obviously, it's like, Hopefully, knock on wood, perpetually, you know, we do four seasons. You know, we do up to 50 episodes a year of that because it's on every Saturday. I shot, I'm shooting Kitchen Crash season two right now on the weekends. And then um, I'm, I, I hosted uh, Hol uh, Holiday Wars, which will come out in November, which is a 
the big cake art competition yeah. where teams make giant seven foot, six foot sculptures out of cake and Rice Krispie treats and fondant, and it is it it is un it's by far the biggest budget show I've I've ever been a part of because it was like the set was a winter wonderland. It was so much fun, but you're like, you know, it's it's a lot of cake eating. It's like, Jeez can I just get some Louise. sausage? <laughs> So yeah, that's that's that's, that's on the so docket much. right now, and then Kitchen Crash will come out July, hopefully. And I would imagine with all these shows, you must have some funny stories where things just oh went God. either horribly well, wrong. We were shooting or... Kitchen. Well, it's Kitchen Crash has been rough because East Coast weather has been rough, so we can't shoot. So I shot in the rain all day on Friday uh -huh. um, with a chef who was the guest j uh, chef judge. There's one of them on Kitchen Crash. His name is um, Justin Sutherland. It was a great sport. But I'm like, they had to buy me a raincoat and rain boots because I didn't have it. And I've never, like, been in the elements so much for a television shoot before. I mean, it was like, there's no escaping it either. I mean, these chefs were cooking under a tent, but we were out there presenting in the rain. And this show is like a block party. So much so that they evidently produced and picked the correct block because these people were getting hammered from 9 a.m. Oh out in the gosh. rain on. You're talking pouring wine at 9 a.m., doing jello shots at 10 a.m., like literally like lighting joints in the middle of the production, and they're all like 50 and 60. Good like the kids God. were out of the house. And they're like hooting and hollering. Like it was a great party. And then the other day there was a house of 30-year-old men. Like It was like a fraternity house, but they were – at least 13 years old, too old, 13 years too old to like live with a bunch of other dudes. Right. You know what I mean? You're like, wow. you guys are not 20. Yeah, yeah. And they had a keg out that said lemonade five cents on it. Um, <laughs> so needless to say, this is like my sandbox to play in this show. And we've kind of, they've ramped it up this year. I did three keg stands on oh, take, first time ever on Food Network. Gosh. And then I was doing, just to impress all the dudes in the house, Right? Oh, yeah. You I was do. doing dips. Like, they held my legs vertical, and I was doing, like, dips on the on the handles <laughs> of the keg, showing them my pectoral strength. Sure. I, but, I mean, with food shows like that, surely there's just <laughs> colossal train wrecks where somebody cooks something. Oh, and it's just it's so It bad. either, like, doesn't get cooked, or you're having to fake <laughs> your way through, like, oh, this is great. No, I was flat out about this. This guy, I don't want to give too much away, but... He made a mole out of chocolate sandwich cookies. And on the same plate were tiny meatballs, Italian meatballs and red sauce made out of breakfast sausage. Then there was canned tuna, which I will not eat. This is my first time eating canned tuna. And curry fr fritter over a beurre blanc sauce, which is a butter that he added pickles to. So it was a pickle beurre blanc sauce. And this was all on the same plate as to be eaten together. It was, it was, I've ne I couldn't believe not only the flavors and the lack of execution, mm. but <laughs> that he had the audacity. Right. But this was not even in the rain, so there's no excuse. What is the excuse that I will give him, or the, you know, whatever, the grace I'll give him, is that the premise of Kitchen Crash is you literally get one bin to yep. go into these people's kitchen. And fill up that has to last you for three rounds of cooking. Yeah. So you don't have a lot yeah, of, you know, yeah. and this yeah, is yeah. You know, not a lot of fresh ingredients. Yeah. Some of the places, you know, we shoot at a Friday. You go to my fridge on a Friday, it's like pizza night. Yeah. Right. And I don't have, you know, we're not flush yeah. right. with ingredients. Yeah. Right. As we yeah. would be on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Right. You know? So, so, I mean, all, all that said, obviously your schedule is just slammed. Like you're, you're, I mean, what, what is it like? You know, being that kind of busy, is it dad friendly? Do you find that like, you know, and, and parent friendly, husband friendly? Like, how do you manage doing that? I think I'm I, I, I'm telling you and I, I had this conversation and I had this conversation when I booked another gig that's going to take me away for three weeks after shooting a week of the kitchen in July, which is right, uh, you know, twofold. A, it's like the heart of summer. I'm, you know, I'm going to be in New York living in a hotel room, you know, an extended stay thing for three weeks plus another week before that at a different hotel. Um, what we're good at uh, is, what I'm good at is, is, is A, being what I like to call a good boy, right? I don't, I live 
I try to live the same on the road mm. when I am shooting as I do at home. Mm. That is being very communicative at home, FaceTiming with my son, sharing, mm -hmm. in, you know, m minuscule thing and large things. Yeah, yeah. You, when I can. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I don't have energy after shooting for 12 hours, but I still, I motor through it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I don't go out. You know, I'll go out to dinner on the weekends if it's ex extended a uh, trip or whatever. I'll go out here and there with a, an exec or something, you know, kiss the ring when I need to. But I'm like, <laughs> and, I'm, and I work out, you yeah. know, and that keeps me yeah. healthy, keeps me accountable. Um, so I think that helps overall with the family dynamic and, you know, with, you know, communicating with my wife. Because right. we've been through it all. I mean, this is yeah. 11 years yeah, deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. My son's been two since this happened. So he really only knows, he doesn't know. I'm not like, you know, it, it's helpful that I'm not playing shows at till 11 p.m. or, you know, to right. midnight. Right. As I, if, if I was in a band, I think it'd be way more difficult. I'm C list, C plus, my hey, B hey, minus no, list. Sir. I'm just being honest no, where I can sir. still move in and out of life pretty comfortably. Mm. You know, I mean, there's there's recognition. There's stuff like that in hotels. People know. So it's like it, it, it is getting harder, uh, you know. I, so I like I can't like be in a hotel. It's hard for me sometimes, especially some of the mid-level hotels they put me at. And some of these shoots, you know what I mean? Like I'm at the bar, it becomes a, th it can become a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't even, I don't even. I'll go get a, a beer or two and I'll bring it up to my room and eat it with my pizza. You know, drink it with my pizza. <laughs> but man, Loretta, like when I'm home, I'm, I go to the office for four hours, five hours. Marl Provisions has a headquarters. I'll do TV stuff, but we eat dinner together clockwork it's mm -hmm. like i was raised you know we we're like 4 30 i can't wait I, yeah. you know, we eat mm -hmm. like 4 30 i'm old but i write lorenzo he's right next to me do you think i'm like a present and uh do you think i'm a present good father as far as given my schedule and yes do you yes he is all right <laughs> as you're holding well, his leg this. pinching his leg is this is the first like, on dadville <laughs> that we've had an yeah. actual guest of... accountability while we <laughs> yeah, ask exactly. accountability <laughs> It was a hard yes too. I mean, I don't know. It's ambiguous yes, maybe. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I think I'm. And listen, I only got one kid. I got one wife. I got two dogs. I mean, it's if I had if I had a whole brood of if I had a teen, you know, and, and my attention was trying to yeah, you know, I was it was it was a battle for it between four kids, five kids. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I it's manageable, and I yeah. think I'm I'm pretty darn good, and it's my priority right yeah. above everything. Yeah. 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 But like my wife used to be rough. Like in the beginning of the days, it was like I was flying in and out. I was not spending the night. I was doing what I can. I was community. She didn't want me to, you know, it was, there was this anxiety around this new career yeah. and being yep. gone for the first five, six years of my career. Yeah. And it's like, we evolved. Yeah. I've been with her. For, we've been, I've known her since she was 18. We've been, we've been a couple since 21. We've been married 16 years. You know, yeah. like we've been through these stages of, now it's like go, go make the, your career. It's important. Your son's fine. You, you're gone three weeks. I'm gonna meet you there this week. The wow. third weekend, we're going to D, I'm get on a train. We're gonna go to the Smithsonian. We're gonna spend the weekend when I have two. And it crushes me sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, for, from yeah. shooting all week, and then like sometimes I need that weekend to sit right, order pizza, you know, eat a club sandwich on my lap while Netflix is like propped on a <laughs> pillow to my left, and I'm you know. Going through all the things, I got the salves. Yeah, you know, I got the, you know, I got everything. The smell, I get a like an oil stick. What do you call them? A diffuser for the room. Oil like, stick. <laughs> you know the oil stick. The you bamboo. Guys, listen, sure. come over here. I want to show you a couple things I'm selling right here. We got a nice painting of JFK, almost done. Got to do his hair tonight. I can finish it. I can put a mohawk. Second, two oil sticks. <laughs> Two different ones, okay? One smells a little bit like pepperoni. The other is kind of a nice, I don't know, what is that? Some kind of rosemary? It doesn't matter. Two oil sticks. <laughs> Freesia. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, that's Dude, good. You've yeah. never but been yeah, more man, of a like... man than when you said oil sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple dipsticks over here for a Honda Accord. Uh, they still smell like good oil. That's back when they were making it better than. It was better than. It's good oil. Synthetic. <laughs> it was in there before all this <laughs> synthetic nonsense. Oh my god. 
So, so I don't know, man. So like, yeah. So I, and then we, we piece it together. But when yeah. I'm home, I think that's the most important. Yeah. When I'm gone, yeah. I'm present. Yeah. And when I'm home, I'm present. Yeah, I feel like great. all the travel that, you know, my wife is kind of the same. Like we've been together for a long, long time. But in the beginning when I would travel, compared to what it looks like now when I travel, which, you know, I'm, I'm leaving for like shorter periods of time at this point. But like we used to talk multiple times a day always have the the long conversation at night back in the day now that's not the case it's just like we've built up security yeah. and when i'm gone it's for security, two days it's, it's trust, like right yeah you, we'll see you when you get back we'll text but yeah, yeah. we don't need to do the the long com yeah, uh, now yeah. when you're gone for like three weeks that's a little different yeah. you gotta you gotta no for sure in, you gotta but, move you know right yeah like i'll fly home for a weekend or whatever yeah. or they'll come and visit me when i did this cake show i was in I'm telling you, man. Sometimes it's great. I, I spent a lot of I've spent a lot of time in Long Island, in New Jersey, New York City, and that's about it, right? Mm -hmm. I did this cake show that shot in Park City, Utah. Oh wow! Ooh. So I was there for like three and a half weeks. Wow. Yeah, that's and nice. this is the beauty of like sometimes it really is. You know, like there's nothing glamorous where I just came from the Four Point Sheridan in Melville, <laughs> yeah. New York, Long Island, <laughs> yeah. right? Where I spent four nights, then I only needed to spend two because the COVID, I couldn't even do the thing. And before that, like I was in Garden City and it's like, it's not, you know, it's not, it's fine. Right. I'm not, I'm comfortable, but it's right. not like this Hollywood. Yeah. Like cliche. Like I'm really, you know, in a mid-level hotel. Daryl Strawberry when, once on a drive had to use our, had to use the head here. Nicest guy you've ever met much taller. Then he looks him. I'm telling Remember you. Remember, nice there was before the coke problem, too. <laughs> yeah. So he was fresh. Talking he was clean. Very loved, just chit chatty. Used the head, okay. bought, I think, like a Gatorade. Nicest guy. He did. No, it was a uh, the, the bottle Frappuccino when it ah, first came yeah, out. That's right. Frankfurt. He Real loved good. that stuff. He loved Obviously that stuff. Obviously, he was trying to but, stay awake. <laughs> But he found out a way. He found out a way. The guy had it. He found out a way. He found out a way. But he, but like, when I was in Park City, I was like, oh my God. It was like, it's winter. I'm in yeah, Park City. Yeah. It's February, uh, you know, January, February in Chicago, which is like the worst. I'm mountains. And they're like, you know, this production's like, we'll put you in with the crew and you're going to stay like 30 minutes north. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. I pulled every, I'm like, ski and ski out, Airbnb. Oh my gosh. Right by the gondola, right across from the, the, uh, what's the fancy hotel? Um, whatever. Uh, the, the, Whatever, like a Four Seasons type thing. But we, so I stayed, it was, they came out, Sarah, Lorenzo came out, then Sarah came out another week, and it was like, we all enjoyed it. Yeah. You wow. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. that was, I mean, I skied like three times, and then I, <laughs> then my buddy's kid got, broke her leg on the, oh. on the, on the mountain. Ooh. They were in Aspen or something like that. And then I read that post, I was skiing fourth day, and I'm like, I think this is a sign. <laughs> Like, I don't need to, <laughs> I need to shut down production because I was like, sign. you know, like trying to do a, the, the terrain park. <laughs> if you know about skiing, right? The terrain park. I'm like, I got it. And then I look at like the, then I look at it from the top of the hill. I'm like, you don't, no, you do no blue, you groomed blues, yeah. Jubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You puddle of fat. Jubs. Can't get down that mountain. <laughs> On the on the butt, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna grind the yeah, grind yeah. the board. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna shred the pipe. Yeah, shred the gnar. So so so, what is there anything as a dad? I mean, you know, Lorenzo's now 13. Do you feel like you're like I'm actually pretty good? Do you have any like kind of superpowers as a dad that you're like I didn't see myself being as good at this one thing, and I'm pretty I'm pretty dad gum good at this stuff. Like any parts you of it that what? you feel really good. Oh, man, he's right next door. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's tempting to ask. Tempting, very. Um, I would say. <laughs> Getting, getting the, it sounds bad. Not getting the truth out of him, but him uh, willingness to be honest, as as willing mm -hmm. and, and as necessary yeah. as possible, yeah. and 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 towing that line between best friend and kicker. You know yeah. what I mean? You like, I believe he's very aware that like he doesn't want to ups upset us you know, and he's there's you know he respects me as a as a father and a disciplinarian which i don't really need to be so good i think inherently uh which we're blessed with but i still like we have so much fun together still and i yeah. think that's like is being a kid and like sharing in things um 
Look, he's, no, he's got his headphone on. He's building rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I had to take down. This is like a signed photo, right, of Jerry. Oh, and wow. Where, right? Beautiful. You know what it's been replaced with? I'm going to try to turn my monitor. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a look at Rockets of the World. Uh, Rockets that's of also the world. cool, though. That's also but cool. You know what? Talk about like being stern, right? I, I want this art. This is my room I dreamed of for a long time. It makes him happy. Now, right? what do you, he looks at it. And I, what do you guys connect on? Like, are you getting into Rockets as well? I'm going to tell you what. No, I'm not into rockets as well, but I love sci-fi. I read a lot of uh, speculative science fiction, first contact novels. <laughs> not too much hard sci-fi, but I wouldn't quantify it as soft sci-fi, more medium sci-fi. Any type of sci-fi based in reality, usually starting with our page, space, son of a, my space, pro, our space program um. and launching, <laughs> launching from there. I don't like to enter worlds already filled with aliens and mysterious portals. Speculative. And, Sci-fi. I've Science never fiction. heard yeah. that before. Shut up, really? Oh, you're going to get some hate mail now. We're strong, <laughs> brother. So I could connect with him on that level. But what we connect with the most on, I would say, is like comedy. Mm, okay. He is funny. Wow. And he's quick. Wow. And he's still green. Yeah, And yeah. it's so fun watching him workshop stuff with me or be off the cuff, on the fly, and it somewhat land. And I'd be like... And that's me. Like, we don't throw the baseball. You know, like, he does not play sports. Uh -huh. He is a black belt in Taekwondo, oh, so he keeps fit that way. But, like, we don't have those, you know, we don't shoot hoops outside. But, man, when he hits me with a zinger and it lands, I'm like, yes, was that original, right? That's the first question I asked him. I go, did you write that? He goes, yeah, because sometimes it's like they'll repeat a meme right. or something right. that they see a YouTuber do, which I've, I've, that's fine. There's a place for that. But when he hits – with an original one, or more so when he when it doesn't land and it could land, like what? How would you punch that up, son? Yeah, that's so great. <laughs> like let's I workshop. I swear I to God, it. that's our playing catch. I love that. It's like wh how do you how next time punch it? You up. know, I'm I not going to say so how much. how would you think? Right. It's, it's true though, but like <laughs> man, and I'm not like I'm not teaching him to be like I don't know. Maybe he's pick, like, but to me, I was. Oh, both of you guys, huh? It's Coco all over the mic. The <laughs> Coco all over. I just see it misting droplets. So, like, I'm not like being like, you got to be funny. Your father was a class clown in grammar school, in junior high, voted in the yearbook, in high school, all this stuff, which is all true, by the way. I was oh, always oh, voted. Man. You know, add that to the practice sheet. I, uh, could you please put that? Oh, don't forget about my band, the Jewel Bags, too. You got to put that on the thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's a grocery bag from a grocery chain. The Chicago grocery was, chain is called the Jewels. I was but I was, but like, I'm not like forcing it. You know what I mean? Right. Like we're yeah. mean football dads, you know, are, you know, they're just, their spirits are crushed. You know, the QB won. They got to, they get him in clinics. They throw him the thing and they got him with the trainers. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm just like creating this, I don't know, environment, I guess, where we really do value what's funny above anything, above like bad language. Not that he can drop swears, but you know we watch the like we watch the Blues Brothers. Like people are like, is your son into Star Wars? Do you see the Mandalorian? You know, nothing wrong with that. All the Marvel stuff. Oh, you guys can go see. I'm like, no, we watch Oh Brother Where Art Thou, and then we watch the next night Blues Brothers. You know, mm -hmm. which I haven't seen in 20 years, mm -hmm. and we just get so much enjoyment mm -hmm. out of comedy. And I think that's you know, I don't know, maybe that's the superpower right there. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that. John, 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 Dave, 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 John, 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 Dave, 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 John, and Dave. I mean, just like we practice. Yep. Um, I have a big question for you. Oh, okay. Okay. How do you define yourself as a person? Oh, jeez. Yeah, totally. That is a big question. Um, I'd probably say dad. Okay. Husband. Yep. Musician, of course. Uh, slightly nearsighted. I knew it. Listen, today's partner is Pair Eyewear, a uh, company that offers high quality eyewear at a fraction of the price. You know, Pair Eyewear lets you change up the look with just a snap. Boom. Base frames start at just $60, yep. Dave, yep. including prescription lenses. Yep. Plus, there are hundreds of top frame designs 
to match whatever base frame you choose. Get started by choosing your base frame with options from the square to the cat eye. You, that's how far the range goes, guys. Mm-hmm. Listen, every frame comes in six different colorways, including classic black to the remixed blue tortoise. <laughs> then pick your top frames and build a collection to match your personality. Yeah, that all sounds great, Dave. But do you know what the best part is? Uh, okay. Here it comes. Okay. For, for every, every pair purchase, purchase pair provides, provides glasses and vision care for children, children around, around the world. world. You knew it. I did know that. You're <laughs> so right, John. That is the best part. Get glasses as unique as you are. One pair, infinite styles. Starting at just 60 bucks. go to PairEyewear.com slash dadville for 15% off your first purchase. That's 15% off at PairEyewear.com slash dadville. So yeah. th- there was another way that I, I this is the last uh, parallel that I'll draw. So enjoy this last one. But I feel like, uh, you know, Dave and I both care a lot about what music our kids prefer, right? Anytime that they are like, oh, I love that one song and it's, and it's something that we like, I feel very proud, right? You know? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and I would imagine that, it's, that there's got to be some overlap there with like you knowing a lot about food, food being a big part of your life and your upbringing, and then, you know, music as the same way as it is with, with you know, kids' palates. They're not exactly, like, you know, complex. Like, our kids are wanting Skittles, mm-hmm. both, you know, culinarily and <laughs> auditorially. So how did you, you kind of, like, cultivate that with Lorenzo? Oh, it's such an uphill battle, and I'd lie. I'd be lying. I think most parents, listen, I know children of chefs that, most of them my co-hosts, that their children have very diverse palates, right? And uh, just they eat everything. My son's not like that. I'm not going to like, and I'm not going to be ashamed of it, but when he, like, tries, like, what makes me, you know, is 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 him knowing a, a well-cooked burger or steak Hmm. like send it back like that makes me proud if it's Uh, if it's well done yeah from a young age we're like send it that's it that's your right we're like if it's not good and that's what he's kind of the connoisseur of Mm -hmm. you know but when he man like when he's like "Mm." you know i'm trying to think of what he tried the other day we had lamb but we ground lamb right almost like a euros Uh, that's a great recipe too Hmm. my greek euros Everybody should make it. These are like the Jeff Marl classics. You start with that, yeah. and you can do no wrong. But it's like a year on you, the pita, but it's a good, good way to you know, to introduce a, a unique flavor. Hmm. It's like in a very recognizable vehicle, which is ground beef again. But And he was like, man, this is really good. And I was like, yes, that's a score. You know, yeah. That's a, like, yeah. Them seeing like a, a, a song that I've always loved on his playlist, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, been been in the car this morning. I mean, no. Yesterday we were coming back from. Um, we have a spot just out of town that we go to, just kind of get away sometimes. And on the way home, he literally said, "Dad, would you just play songs that you really like?" And I froze up. I was literally like, "Whoa, oh god!" I mean, yeah, but how do we? <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's easy. Okay, oh gosh. Um, Where did you start? Like, was it was it was it hard? Were you? Stumped? It was really hard. I sat there. I was like, okay. Think, think of. The, so I was like, let's do some Paul Simon first, because I was like, okay. And then I did some Elton John. I did what a fool believe. Um, no. Little doobie brothers, little doobies. Um, but it was so overwhelming, and I almost was like, I can't do this on the spot. It made me think today. I'm going to start a playlist of just songs my kids need to know, and then I can just go to it. But he's in a phase. He's ten now, where he'll be like, Hey, don't no no, just play what you want us to hear. And I'm like, Bro, that is wow. That is heavy. That is like you are putting. That's heavy. Right? I mean, could you imagine every night Lorenzo coming and being like, Dad, cook like a meal you think I need to eat. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> uh, like, too much pressure when it's, you have everything at, you know, every, you know. That's what I'm saying. Every available option. That's exactly you need to, right. You know, like, how about narrow it down with a genre, buddy? Right. That's, it. That's kind For of what I, I, I really did have a moment where I was like, okay, maybe it should be like something fun or we're driving. So maybe something that feels pastoral because it's out in the woods. It's like. Golly Moses, it's a lot of pressure. Um, okay, so little Jackson Brown running out empty, coming at you oh, out the road. Think about that. I would have done that. <laughs> See, in a yeah. heartbeat. Well, you know what's a nice little hack for that? Uh, another Jeff Ball pro tip <laughs> is we share the same Spotify account, so our liked songs is ongoing for years and yep. years and years, yep. and it's evolved. And we all, my wife adds to it, I add to it. 
and Lorenzo adds to it. Oh, so wow. Like, it stinks because you can't listen. Like, if I'm, whatever, if they're in the car and I'm at the gym or whatever, yeah. I, yeah. in a hotel gym working out, I can't listen to it while they, you know, right. they kick each other off. But the beauty, and I'm sure you can do that if you have, end of, you know, you can yeah, share yeah. playlists, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. but this one's like automatic. So every time you heart a song, it goes to the top of that list. We can, oh, that's like smart. right now, it's Oh Brother, where it's, you know, uh, Tim, Dan Tominsky, you know, the Soggy Bottom Boys yeah, yeah. of uh, Man of Constant Sorrow is. Top of the list. Man of Constant and Ridiculous Sorrow. amounts of repeats right now. That song, I didn't know why I liked it so much, but I couldn't have stopped listening to it when it came out. It was like, I don't even, this is not a genre I, I listen to, but I will hit repeat on this song until I believe I saw. I, I went to the top, yeah, I went to the uh, the mountain tour with Allison Krause oh, yeah. and um, Dan uh, obviously Dan Tomiski yeah. and even Old Man, uh, come on. Oh, uh, I can't think of uh, Ralph Stanley. Oh, yeah, Ralph Stanley yeah. was there. But yeah, I got into that too. But what is it? Why is it so It's it's the soundtrack is that's like the most listenable song on the entire soundtrack. Yeah. I feel like the two versions of there the, the the full band and especially the acoustic version. Oh yeah. Um but it's the rest of the, it's like again, it's like this memory and this yeah. sense yeah. memory and this feeling yeah. of that yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. I yeah. mean, but I saw that tour with my in-laws who are from Appalachia. They're from oh, Kentucky. Wow. Huh. My mother-in-law is one of 17 kids Good from gracious. Hazard, Kentucky. Like real, real Appalachian. So yeah. when I started dating my wife, it's like, you know, we'd sleep over and we'd sleep in separate bedrooms. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I would wake up and we'd wake up to biscuits. And bluegrass, right? It'd be bluegrass. And it sounds like lions too. Wow! Hey, no way! Wow! <laughs> I think I just got a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so biscuits and bluegrass. Biscuits and bluegrass. So I loved it. So, so I went to, to <laughs> see <laughs> that. <laughs> but I've seen, you know. Okay, so, Brooke, so I don't even know how we got there. It, it, it doesn't matter. We got there all the same. So thank you, first of all, for hanging with us today. We have a couple of uh, we have a couple of questions we always round this thing out with. So buckle up. Love it. I'm ready. Okay, that's first. What is the one thing that you want Lorenzo to know? Always pays to be kind. Oh, wow. More than being tough. Wow. Mm. Mm. But sometimes you got to find the, 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 the midline of that. That's good. You got to find a balance between two. You were ready for I that. I like that. Is that something you think about a lot? That was amazing. I don't know. I just always, I don't know. Yeah. That's I don't good. Know. No, I did. I was not ready. I didn't like. I didn't write that down. No. Jeez, that's good. That's, that's great. Answer. All right. Last question. What do you want Lorenzo to say at your funeral? Oh, I was zinger, man. Some fart <laughs> noise. I don't care. Get up there and go, <laughs> and then flick off the crowd and press play, and it's like you know, in 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 my room by Beach Boys plays, and everybody <laughs> cries. In my room. What a <laughs> random song. <laughs> that song I would mean, kill me at a funeral. That would kill that dry I would just eye jump in, in the coffin with the body of somebody playing <laughs> right? at a funeral. Oh, it's the most. And I would be so confused song. why I felt like I did, but just so feeling it all the same. Uh, in like why is he room. in the casket? <laughs> in my room. What a weird funeral Jeff. song. That's gonna make me think about that the rest of the day. Now every time you I get gonna, everybody's Steven gonna listen song, to it after this. It's like the best funeral song. Do you want great funeral songs? Head on over to Spotify for Funeral Mix '96. No, you know what would be a great <laughs> sketch. Now I'm, I gotta say it out loud, and it's trademarked. But like uh, an old time compilation, you know, '70s rock, classic rock compilation where the guy's standing up and yeah, all the yeah, scrolling yeah, yeah. songs, yeah, bits yeah. of songs, but for, for play at your funeral, oh, funeral gosh. rock, Freebird, no doubt. Yeah, that's been done. Right, you got to come. That, that's too cliche. Cats in the cradle. You know, that's that's that's. <laughs> no, they can't. No, that's bad. That's like stairway that's to what heaven. The son, that's. If I really screw up the parenting thing here, that's yeah, what Lorenzo's going to yeah. play. What about, yeah. what about like, Stairway to Heaven? That's got to be the winner. It's too long, and it's too rocking. It's too hard. What about Warrant Heaven? Um, I would do Heaven, but there's a couple. Oh, oh, God. Right? Talk about the 7th grade, 8th grade dance. Courtney, will you dance with me? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I'm like, but it's Heaven by Warrant. <laughs> then if, then uh, What It Takes by Aerosmith would come oh. on, and I'm like... I danced by myself. Yeah, you just hold yourself in the middle. I just hold myself. I didn't care. I was on the dance floor for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I'm trying to think what other great funeral songs there would be. I, can't, I always got, said, um, oh, Candle Heaven the by, Candle if you ever heard of Heaven by The Rascals, one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Um, How far is of, Heaven, Low Soling Boys? I also think, um, oh, yeah. Um, uh, shoot, what did I just say? Um, in my life would be brutal. Oh. I play that at my friend's funeral, actually, with some of the you guys. Did? Yeah. Well, it was his memorial. Oh. My buddy Tom, we had Tom Fest for it. I have a poster on my wall, but that's a smaller handmade poster we did oh, that I organized Tom for. Fest. Yeah, t- he was a very prolific, very talented songwriter, musician. We played him. We grew up together. We played in bands, but he was in more serious bands with all my other buddies, whatever. But he passed away from he had two liver failed liver oh, uh, transplants oh, during COVID. Man. So nobody could see him. It was a horrible oh. story. Nobody could mourn him. It was all this crazy stuff. But we played that in one of his songs at his memorial in like. Try getting through in my life at, you know, yeah. one of your best friends. Especially the high part. Funerals. In yeah. my life. I, yeah, you're not going to do that. I, I, no, I didn't do that. That was, I went, in, I went lower. <laughs> wow. In my. <laughs> you did the crash, you crash test dummies. Did. Yeah. You just took that thing south for the win. That'd be a good. <laughs> I, I actually got on the radio requesting that song. Yeah, you did. When it came out, I really did. I, I called him up. I was like, "You play that new song by Crash Test Dummies? It's got a great hook." Okay, this is maybe this is the perfect it. way to end this interview. Fun fact about that song: I watched a video. This this shows you what happens with my days when, if I'm not careful, somebody sent a tweet about something and it connected to a story behind the song Crash Test Dummies, and I was like, "No, don't let this play." And it started playing in five minutes while we're gone. But fun fact about that song: <laughs> he that that chorus was not going to be that. He that was a place filler. And he sent it to the band, and they were like, "We love this." It's like, yeah, I got to write the lyrics. They're like, no, dude, just sing that. Like, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. it. And, and they were, he was like, "No, it's stupid." They're like, "Dude, it may be the coolest part of the song." So he's like, "Okay, isn't that fascinating?" That is so funny. I uh, I always wondered what happened to them. Like, do are they still playing? Like uh, clubs? I don't think like so. bars. I maybe no he's still around. But it, would it be amazing if he was writing like a bunch of like, you know, Justin Bieber hits? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Like you're like, oh, baby, remember the one hit wonders four knob blondes, oh, and then you, you know, and then you four hear about <laughs> four. N- but then you hear about whatever. No, she's uh, cracked, uh, Linda Perry. Oh, she's Crushing she's written it. every. I want to say Linda Perry, but that's yeah, that, not no, it. that's it. That is it. Is it? Yeah, she oh, really. Like, I thought, wasn't she in T two? Nope. Um, <laughs> still teen T two. Still teen. <laughs> uh, you no oh, Terminator two, oh, not the video T two. <laughs> um, Jeff, you are a legend. Thank you so much. This was for so fun, on. man. That's what that's the secret to longevity in the music career is having a deep and just sticking with that. Oh, like baritone Johnny the whole Cash. Time. Then you don't have to. I mean, yep. done. Like his radio visits. Miss- for, could you imagine his early morning radio visits? Like, can you sing this morning? He's like, I mean, yeah. It's just <laughs> I'm talking. I walk by. Parents made him come directly home right after <laughs> school. school. Ah! Remember the skin? The girl had the skin disease or something? Oh, it's a weird heartbreaker. Song. Weird one. Can I change it from in my room to? <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm about to die. You may have to sing it at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Dead fish.